we want to see free roaming bison in the state of Montana. We just have different ideas about how to go about that. Our position is that there is no room for a hunt until the current management policy changes. The Greater Yellowstone Coalition has been working for over a decade to return bison to a migrating wildlife species in the Greater Yellowstone ecosystem. They need to be able to head to lower elevations in the winter and seek out the habitat they need to make it through these really difficult and challenging winters. We can't create this box around Yellowstone and treat it like an island and tell bison that they can't leave it because it's not natural for that to happen. They, they shot two buffalo about a month ago. Why so, did they shoot them? because they were outside of the park and they were, I think, about 10 miles outside of the park on the south arm of the Madison. And they went out early one morning and shot them because they had gone for a walk, because they didn't respect the invisible line that is the border of Yellowstone National Park. And do, do they think that they had uh, brucellosis or something like that? No, it's, it's just them. part of the management plan that any buffalo that were in the area they were in at that time could be shot because there are cows out there. Right. Even though they were bull buffalo and posed absolutely no transmission risk of brucellosis, there is no way it's possible. Out of concern over the disease of brucellosis, the management plan has been very restrictive for how bison can leave the park and under what conditions. Brucellosis is, uh, is an ancient disease. Um, an ancient disease of animals with hooves like cattle and buffalo and uh, pigs and goats and sheep, but also infectious to people really infectious to people. About 10 organisms, maybe even fewer than 10 organisms, can uh, cause infection for life in people. In people it's called undulant fever, that's the ancient name, um, because it causes recurring sweats and fever and chills. And, uh, and once people get it, they pretty well have it for life. And uh, so they'll wake up with a soaked bed um, and, and then, then, then just bone shaking, chills, and then back to fever again. Um, smaller numbers of people get um, different kinds of infections. They can get pneumonia, uh, and they can get infection of uh, reproductive organs, like uh, infection of the testicles, which is pretty uncomfortable, I've heard. Um, even uh, heart infections, myocarditis, and that'll kill about 2 to 5 percent of people that, uh, that are affected with brucellosis. In the old days, the way most people got infected with brucellosis was uh, drinking unpasteurized milk or unpasteurized dairy products. So the reason that we have pasteurized milk, I mean, why is it that the United States always pasteurizes milk? Well, it was for brucellosis. See, but we've kind of forgotten that. We've forgotten the human health aspect of it. And, and we think it's all kind of a rancher deal. Now in livestock or bison, um, the only signs you see are abortion. It uh, activates in pregnancy, and toward the tail end of a, of a pregnancy, it'll cause abortion of the fetus. So they started a national brucellosis eradication program. Um, the actual date on that start was about 1934. So we've got about 70 years of an eradication process, spent over $10 billion on the, on the effort over that period of time. And uh, we've gone from maybe 150,000 infected ranches in the 40s uh, down to less than 10 affected ranches and then one population of bison. Uh, Yellowstone Park's the last holdout of positive brucellosis bison. But it's complicated by the fact that it is a free-ranging population of bison. Uh, it's federal instead of state or private owned. And, and so it's really more of a social or political uh, kind of a, uh, kind of an issue right now instead of just pure science. Bison management in Yellowstone is managed through an interagency agreement with five different agencies, three federal and two state. It's quite challenging with five different agencies. Those five agencies have 
um, very different missions. Uh, Mon Montana Department of Livestock and the Animal and Plant Health, in Health Inspection Service both are interested in uh, disease. So they're interested in brucellosis as it affects livestock in Montana. Uh, the National Park Service is uh, charged with protecting unimpaired the resources in Yellowstone um, and for providing for visitor enjoyment of those resources. The Forest Service is uh, charged with managing the resources of the national forest, both for um, industry purposes, you know, logging, mining, that sort of thing, but also for recreational purposes. And Montana Fish, Wildlife, and Parks is charged with managing the fish, wildlife, and the park resources, uh, recreational resources that we have here in the state of Montana. Um, so that one species of bison, in some way, you know, each of those five agencies has um, some piece or some part of its mission that says you need to manage bison. And those missions, um, in some ways, are uh, incongruous. The management has been incredibly heavy-handed in that bison are exposed to hazing by individuals on horseback or snowmobiles or even helicopters. Um, they're often captured and put into a testing facility to test and see if they have brucellosis. Many of the bison are sent to slaughter and, and this is all because bison aren't giving any room to roam outside of the park. We know that we could get rid of brucellosis in bison by test and slaughter. That's how over the last 70 years we've gotten rid of brucellosis in the livestock herds across the United States. We could do that. We could go out and we could test and slaughter um, every single bison that tests positive for brucellosis. Now is that socially, culturally palatable for um, the citizens of the United States and even the world. I mean, these are Yellowstone bison. They're incredibly important and they're incredibly near and dear to many people's hearts. Given that bison are wildlife, it's, it's absolutely critical that bison are managed by wildlife professionals. So that means Montana Fish, Wildlife and Parks and it means the National Park Service. And Right now, we have a case where the Department of Livestock in Montana plays a major role in bison management, and the federal agency called the Animal Plant Health Inspection Service also plays a major role. What we would like to see is that we manage them like elk or mule deer or any other um, you know, free-ranging wildlife species that we have here. Obviously, we can't do that today because of brucellosis, and so our ultimate outcome is that we worry about bison as wildlife. We don't worry about them as a, a species in need of disease control or management because of a disease. I think for the livestock industry that they have assurance that their cattle and therefore their economic viability and their markets aren't going to be threatened by uh, bison that carry brucellosis. Um, the fact is the Department of Livestock is mandated to um to perform those, those duties to protect Montana agricultural industry and Montana public health. Um, the fact is, is that um, it really isn't the Department of Livestock that makes these unpopular programs. Uh, to me, it makes more sense to do, yeah, to keep with the program that's been successful the last 70 years and work these bison through, um, mark them electronically like we have the capability of doing. Um, test, vaccinate, remove, and looking maybe down the road toward a greater good of having a disease-free bison herd for a little bit of upfront sacrifice of, of harassing and moving them around and working them um, in, in, in the short term. That's what I would personally do. I should say too that, you know, this is my opinion, and you know, my opinion certainly is not uh, reflected by the uh, United States government or the Department of Agriculture, the Department of Interior, the state of Montana or Wyoming or Idaho, the Department of Livestock certainly, uh, or even my, my wife.